So let's move on to topic number three. And this is a topic that could end up resulting in costly changes if not understood properly. So let's talk about the potential impact to the size of the electrical room. Toby, can you explain the changes related in this area and how that impacts you as an electrical contractor in terms of space requirements? Yeah, 110.26, the working space, is probably, I think, the most important change for us contractors. This says, this section's all about working space and egress. Uh, and it's been a concern for a long time how equipment doors should be accounted for our working area and egress. Uh, this change states that the equipment doors uh, in the open position have to still leave 24 inches of uh, width and six and a half feet tall uh, clearances for egress. You know, Toby, a graphic or illustration might help us with this visually. And I think that as we look at the slide on the screen now, we have an example where we're using large equipment because again, the large equipment would have the largest door sizes um, that might protrude into the working space. And in this case, if we were to think about this, we know we have requirement that doors must open a minimum of 90 degrees, but in often cases, uh, equipment doors will open further than that. So there's, sometimes there's a little calculation that you have to do to figure out how much does it protrude into the working space. In this example, if we were to take a 480 volt switchboard, and if we would say at the edge of the working space we have a, a grounded concrete wall, then this would be a condition two um, condition for the table 110.26 and would require three and a half feet or 42 inches of working space clearance. And if we would take a standard switchboard door that's 30 inches wide and opens 120 degrees, now we, we calculate we're protruding into that working space 26 inches, right? So we no longer, with 16 inches remaining, we no longer have that 24 inch egress entrance path that you just mentioned, Toby. And so the electrical room has to get bigger to accommodate that. So I think that's a, that's a big issue to consider. The electrical room is my biggest concern. With multiple equipment lineups, we can have uh, pieces of equipment that face each other and those opening doors could intrude into each other. Oh, that's a great point. When we think about multiple equipment lineups, there are so many additional configurations to take a look at. We have a graphic for that as well. And if we look in this graphic illustration where we do have facing lineups, you have to consider open doors in both lineups. And do you still maintain the 24 inches egress entrance path um, that's required? So I think when you look at in both cases, it's really important. When we think about an e-house or other areas like that, you may be in a really in a constrained location and it's important to make sure you have that egress path. Yeah, and it's important to remember too that the, the measurement for that egress path is taken with the doors open at that minimum 90 degree angle. Uh, the code requires that doors are open at least the, the 90 degrees, so that's how we measure our egress path. Now, even if the equipment is capable of opening the door more than 90 degrees, you know, that, that's all well and good if there's no constraints and limitations about the space specifically where that equipment's being installed. Mm -hmm. So even though you may have the specifications from the manufacturer and know that that door is going to open more, now you get onto the site and, and there's actual physical constraints of that electrical equipment room that won't allow for that door to open more than 90 degrees, you're back at square one and you have to take that into account as well. So a lot of pre-planning that's gonna be needed for these types of installations and, and to comply with this one. Yeah, contractors really need to review the plans and the equipment early on in the project because this could change the floor plan of electrical room. We also need to be aware that uh, not only are our building inspectors gonna be checking this, but the fire marshal as well when he comes to check for egress right. and stuff like that. And then we have uh, addition of PV, energy storage equipment. We start putting those in electrical rooms. Mm -hmm. Now are we encroaching in the existing switch gear? Uh, it's just a lot of things to be concerned about as far as clearances and egress. Absolutely. And even in addition to the, the requirements now for accounting for the doors as part of your egress path, we saw some other changes in 11026, specifically the addition of a requirement where we have to start considering the, the graded area for that entire mm -hmm. working clearance space. So, so the width and the, and the depth of that workspace, the ground, the, the area in front of that equipment has to be smooth graded level uh, to ensure that the worker that's performing that service maintenance or, or needs to examine that equipment while it's energized has a, a nice flat level area to work in. This can become specifically difficult if you're in an area where the electrical equipment is outside 
and you require that working clearance and you're up against maybe a, a property line where you don't necessarily have control over the entire working clearance because it extends into to an adjoining property. So it's some things that we need to keep aware, be aware of during the planning stages as well. Yeah, big concern of mine because I'm in California and all our switch gears outside because we got great weather. 